Hi guys, I'm Rupert. What's up guys? I'm Charlie. Uh, two whole tomatoes. If you wanted to as well, you could kind of... another episode today we're going to be doing chicken mole tacos um, it's a favorite of ours we've had it on the food store before serving at events um, it's been going really well um, you guys have actually recommended this which is great um, it's lovely hearing from you and then Charlie from the dive in yeah us a bit more. it's it's not a recipe for the faint-hearted we you see it all over Mexico it, there's obviously a huge array of ingredients but we've tried to dim that down for you guys so um, yeah there's definitely some things you'll need but don't get overwhelmed too much. And as always, guys, uh, like, subscribe, push that notification button. Uh, it's great hearing from you. Anyway, without further ado, we're gonna dive in and get to the first thing. All right, guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is get our chicken on. Um, we're gonna basically get our pot here. Mm. And we've got, we've got eight chicken thighs. So, um, it's, probably, it's a lot of tacos. Yeah, <laughs> so that'll be enough for probably like five, six people I'd say and you can use like a whole chicken as well if you you know and you can break that down and chop it up as well so we're gonna add the skin side up in the pan yeah and it's good to have the bone in just because you want to create a little bit of a stock um, you know we're only par cooking it in this um, in this dish because we're gonna finish it once we've got our sauce Amazing. So if you just want to put some water over that, and yeah, I'll... and the cold water is just going to cover the skin, so um, you know not overfill it, but just to where that line is and where the actual chicken is, um, you're just covering it with cold water. Exactly. Just dice up, or just roughly chop. So you don't. It's not something you need to fine dice. You just need a nice roughly chopped onion, which will just pop into there. All right. So you've put the chopped onion in there, and then what we're going to do is put three garlic cloves and we're just going to do the bowl yeah so just bang them down um, perfect very rusty very easy yeah at this, this point you don't really need to chop them we're just pretty much getting to the point where we're just going to hard cooking our chicken so not as tender so when the bone falls out but just cooked all the way through because then we'll get them to that nice tender part when we've finished them in our sauce yeah. we're also going to go with a pinch of uh, mexican oregano um, you can find these in you know all sorts of little stores. Um, just head online, and um, you can just find them there. And it's definitely worth a shout rather than regular oregano. So much more flavour, and it's delicious. And then we're going to hit it with a bit of salt as well, bro. Put some salt here. Perfect. And this is just rock salt, molten salt. You can use any sort of table salt if you really want to. We'll just give some nice couple of pinches. One more. Perfect. And that is a nicely seasoned dish. But don't worry too much about pepper, it's basically just salting it and then what we're going to do is put that on a really low simmer and that's probably going to take what, an hour and a half? Yeah, I'd probably say yeah, about, about, an hour, hour, yeah, about 45 minutes. minutes. Cool. Alright then guys, so now our chicken's on, we're just going to bring that up to a boil and then to a simmer. Uh, but the next thing is, is making our sauce while that's cooking. So we've got a heavy bottom skillet pan and we filled that with about 100 mils of canola oil. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically cook off our chilies and get going with the sauce. Yeah, so our sauce is going to be like, it's super gloopy, it's really rich and it's obviously got a lot going on in there. Yeah. So um, we're going to basically go in with these um, dried chilies. So these are Mexican dried chilies we've ordered. We've got three types of variations. We've got ancho chilies, which sort of look a bit like wrinkly, but they're like, you know, they really smell good, they've got like heaps of depth of flavour in there. We've got bajillo chilies, which are a bit more of a shinier skin. Um, they're not too fragrant to smell when you first get them, but they're still like got huge of depth of flavour. And then we've got pastillas, which sort of look in between of the ancho yeah. and the guajillo. So all these chilies, they have different unique flavours that, you know, they're all sort of dried and picked from Mexico. Um, and yeah, they're very important to have for this sauce. So you kind of need to, you know, find these chilies. And you can get them on Amazon, you can get them on, you know, look up online to your local Mex, like, gross trader. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm sure you can find lots, even some supplies, even some stores have them. Yeah, and it's exactly. just, you know, going around finding it, going a bit out of your depth, bit out of your comfort zone and trying something new, which is great. So the way we're going to extract the flavours from these chilies is that we're going to sort of boil our kettle and we're going to have some hot water in this pan. And what you're going to do is we've got, we're going to start with our ancho chilies okay. and we're going to put them into our uh, oil. And we're just going to lightly sort of fry them, get some colour on there, 
Ona göre soru meşru hakkında bakın. They're sort of blistered up, and you, you can smell them obviously in that mold. Um, so just keep turning your ears just so they don't catch. And I'm going to go in basically with I've got some boiled water here, and we're just going to go in with about three pints of just hot boiling water into our pan just here. So if you just like to transfer those um, chilies just over to this water here, pretty good. So with these chilies, they're like all now, you know, they're puffed up and they've, you know, got some colour on there and they're a lot more fragrant. So with this oil in the pan, we're basically going to be using that same oil to be toasting off pretty much the rest of our ingredients and everything's going to be going into this one pot. So next off, now the anchos are done, we're going to be going in with our pastilla and our grajillo and just be doing the same process. I guess you could say it's sort of like shallow fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think always just be cautious that you've got hot oil as well here. I just wish you guys could smell it because there's just so many nice, like, they're just almost coming back alive, aren't they? Yeah. Um, and they're basically, once you put them in this hot water, they'll just start to rehydrate and they'll just soften up and just become this beautiful base and flavouring for our sauce. So, Super, super good. Yeah. All right, guys, so these are just, yeah, they're nicely fried, lightly puffed up, and then we're just gonna add this to the same pot. Exactly. And while, while these are just sitting there, I'm gonna go in with the pasta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to be cautious that you've got one more as well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so while Rupert's just transferring that, I've got another onion here, and I'm just gonna be cutting it in half and we're going to be doing the same sort of rough dice we did for our chicken. Um, so there isn't a whole lot of, you know, finely diced in this recipe or anything. It's just because um, it's all going to be basically blitzed up into a nice um, thick sauce anyway. So you just peel that off. Into our skins. Peel that off. And then we've got some whole garlic here as well. Right, so if you just want to get your tongs and just submerge those in the water, and they're just going to want to just sit in that water and they'll slowly just become a lot more soft. This is really just getting the aromatic flavours out exactly. by frying them off ever so lightly. Yeah. So if you weren't doing this sauce and you wanted to use it for a salsa, um, if you've got like, open gas or anything, you just put them straight onto your gas ring and you'll see them start to puff up and blister and then put them in water. So toasting them before just gives you... It's the same when like toasting any kind of nut. You yeah. want to get the most out of the flavour. Exactly, and just rehydrating. If you, you can rehydrate them straight away, but you just... Um, you, I just don't feel like you're maximising so that flavour. And yeah, you can just... It just pretty much fills the entire room. Yeah. Of just this amazing aromatic. Love and it. these chilies aren't spicy, they're just full of flavour. Um, and that's why I just love using Mexican ingredients. Right, so we've got two onions there. We're gonna add this to the oil? No, so we're gonna just chop them up a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm just gonna roughly chop these. Exactly, so cut in half, and then just basically yeah, slice just like that. And then we've got some ginger here. Don't bother peeling it, just chop it straight up into the same size chunks as probably the garlic. Okay. Um, the chicken's just come up to a boil. Skins and all, bro. Skins everything. Um, it's just come up to a boil and I just turned it down onto a simmer and we're just going to keep it that way just for another 35 to 40 minutes. Amazing. We're going to add this to the canola oil. Yeah, just be careful of getting the splash back. That's all right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. cool. So now that's added, yeah. we're not going to be frying it with colour. We just want to just like basically just soften them up. Um, and then it'd be good to get a sort of spoon or a spatula. And once they're done, we'll just add it into the same pot. Yeah, exactly. And why does it have to be canola? Um, just because olive oil, you just don't really want that flavour. You just kind of want like quite a bland tasting oil, something with a high frying temperature. Um, so so when you add it, so you don't, you don't taste it all in the marinade sauce. Yeah, exactly. And 
you know, it's only just going to be there, basically we're just frying it all in one pot. Mm. It's just a bit easier that way. Um, so yeah, because we're going to be shallow frying the rest of all of our ingredients in the same oil. Yeah. So rather than just having to add and then clean the pan out, add again, you know, just say it's the jar clean perfect. Just pop it all in there. So once these are all fried off, all then starts to add the rest of our bits and pieces. Cool. Right then, so basically while those onions are now softened, we're going to add our tomatoes. We're going to add whole cherry tomatoes. Um, it's basically one cup of cherry tomatoes, or additionally you can add uh, two whole tomatoes if you wanted to as well. You can kind of cut those up and uh, put them face down in the oil. But for this, we're going to put just cherry tomatoes in and soften those up. Straight in, just, the whole, just straight in. Those are going to like blister, get really nice around the edges, nice and soft. Add it to the same stock pot again. It's going to again add a bit more body to our sauce. So now that sort of nicely coloured and just sort of blistered, it's not brown but it's like it's just stuffing through. We can stuff it through. Exactly. And we're going to put in our next bits for our, um, for our mole. So we've got a flour tortilla. So if you've got these laying around or just some left over, just keep them here for your sauce. Um, I'm just going to cut them into smaller pieces just so they're a bit more manageable. Um, the reason why we're using this is just because it's going to be um, a thick enough for our sauce. So we've got these tortillas, we've got some bread rolls here, and then we've got some salted crackers as well. So it seems a bit crazy to be adding all these things, but it's just going to be adding layers and layers upon flavour, and this is going to be the thick enough for the sauce. So, now we've got these in. Nice so yeah, traditionally putting in flour tortillas, bread and these salted crackers are really traditional in making this mole sauce. Um, so yeah, once they get nice and brown in that oil, just transfer them straight into the same pot and um, then we'll start getting to, to the final stages of it. So we're still keeping that residue oil in there, the oil's picking up flavours from all the little bits we've been putting in. Bread sort of soaking that up as well. So once our, now our tortillas are all browned off yeah. and they're back in the same pot, we're just using um, just white bread hot dog buns. Um, if you've got leftover baguette bread lying around or sourdough, once these are like sort of really crispy, like yeah. well, not like toasted, but they actually need to be quite hard. Okay. Um, we'll put them again. Kind of like crouton or Sort of, yeah, basically. All right, this bread looks nice and crispy, so we'll add that too. Yeah. All right, that's really done. Cool. Now for the crackers. So we're using Ritz crackers, but any salted like tuck crackers, anything you've got. Anything you've got kind of around. So just, we're just going to slowly lightly toast those up. Just because our bread's soaked up a little bit and oil, we'll just have a touch of corn to that. So it's going to look a bit crazy and people are going to be asking what the hell are you doing while you're frying off bread and putting it in soaking in water. Looks like something you'd feed ducks when you go down to a pond, but trust me, once you start to blend this all up, it's going to be it's going to be crazy. crazy. Okay, next thing. So we have um, some hazelnuts and some almonds. Yeah. Um, you can use walnuts, but we need, just like we've got hazelnuts, we'll use those up. Um, we've got some whole and shelled almonds, and now that the pan's dry and that it's all been soaked, soaked, up, soaked up by the bread, we can now start toasting these nuts. Um, so, and then we'll just basically toast those off and they'll go straight into straight as well. our pan as well. While these are toasting, I'm just leaving my toast on a low heat. Our chicken's done, so we'll just take that off the heat. Um, it smells delicious. It's just poached perfectly enough because we're going to finish it off with the sauce. Exactly. So, we take them out of our of our sauce and you can see it's just reduced a little bit as well so got that chicken oil as well yeah some nice chicken fat in there we've got a lovely poached um, chicken here all right of course this is the last one and then we're going to keep that juice of that stock aren't we absolutely and basically we've got a little chicken stock cube and we're just going to add that to our chicken juice that's really lovely we just stir that in and once that's all incorporated we're going to add that juice straight into this pan. Straight into the pot yeah. as well. So all of that nice chicken stock can go straight into our the protein liquid. It's going to go straight into this pan. It smells great. Yeah. And it's got a nice 
so we're not wasting anything. make sure everything's submerged just about under this liquid so it's all going to sort of soften um, and we're pretty much getting it now. So we're pretty much on our final stages of getting the sauce done. Um, so we've got some hot sauce here, we've just got some Valentina hot sauce, you can use some Tabasco. Um, I'd say around a quarter cup of that would be really good, you don't have to add this in, it's not a traditional way but we, I think it's just a nice thing to add just to give it a little bit of kick and spice. Um, our skillet pan is on, still on a low heat, and we've got a cup of sesame seeds, and we're going to toast those off in the pan, and we're going to add that into there as well. Amazing. Perfect. So we'll keep an eye on those, make sure they don't burn, because I always do that. I look the other way, and I come back to it, and I've got all of a sudden they burn. Burn sesame seeds, so keep an eye on that. Um, if you've got 100 grams of dark chocolate, now would be a really good time to add that as well. I've got 50 grams of cocoa powder, so just half the amount just because it's a bit stronger. So we're going to add our cocoa powder in there as well. And chocolate is really authentic and really good thing to use at this point in time because this adds not only just that colour but that sort of bitterness, that sort of really a sort of more indulgent rich flavor. flavor, yeah. And chocolate's used everywhere in Mexico. I mean, it's just in their dishes. It's, it's a lovely sort of almost like an Aztec thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's sacred food. It's delicious. Now it's time to add the rest of our spices, and this is the last finishing touch. So we got one teaspoon of um, peppercorns. So that go in there. We've got seven. Um, to eight sort of um, cloves. Yeah. And I'll go in there. We've got a teaspoon of ground cumin. That's a big teaspoon. Uh, yeah, a hefty teaspoon. Yeah, like a tablespoon of cumin. In there. We've got um, one teaspoon of pimiento seeds, of ground pimiento seeds. Amazing. It goes in there. And then we've got a tablespoon of our oregano. Amazing. Probably not some sort and then these sesame seeds are okay. Sesame seeds, you want them really dark. Really dark? Yeah, so we'll just increase the heat. Just okay. The smell of it's just insane. Man. They still need to invent the smell of it. Right? So good. Right, so we'll get onto our blending phase. Get this out of the way. Cool. Okay, brilliant. So those are starting to turn nice and brown. And let's get them in there. So we'll just see how nice and brown they are. And they smell delicious. Yeah, it's fine. And, uh, don't expect such tiny seeds. Cool. And now that's everything added in there, bit by bit. Wow. And we've got we're left with this really thick, hefty sauce. So now we're going to get ready for the blender. And what I recommend to do is just with some leftover water from your kettle, just keep that on the side. And when things start to, if it looks a bit too thick for your blender to handle. Yeah. We'll just add this bit by bit to just get it to that sauce consistency. We'll just add it halfway through the blender so it can cope. Music montage. <laughs> Same skillet pan we had. I'm gonna pull that straight in there. It's super thick. Chug it. Chug, chug, chug. It's quite a lot of sauce. Yeah, we still got a lot of 
Could be like Millie. That's a shitload of Millie. Holy moly! And then what we have our chicken with that. Um, yeah, so if you grab our chicken thighs, let's do it. chicken we've just sort of pulled them apart taken them off the bone um, and we're just going to put them in our tacos we've, we've also had sauce left over. yeah we've got loads of sauce left over we've just put it in a ziploc bag and that can keep in the freezer for as long as you like up to about three to four months so amazing um yeah and it's just so versatile to use so we've got our lovely tortillas amazing if you want to start putting your chicken on top of each amazing. we've just diced up a little bit of onion here as well just to go on top just because it's not a taco without a bit of onion some coriander Yeah, super rich. And this is also like traditionally just served with some nice rice. And you can have that on the side as well. You get some pickled onions on there, whatever you like. And there we have those ready to go. Oh, lovely chicken mole tacos. Amazing. All right then guys, so there you have it, chicken mole tacos. Super easy, a bit more out of your comfort zone, but that's what kitchens are for, is getting in there and getting stuck in and doing new things. Um, as always, like, subscribe, push that notification button for us to see more of what we're doing. Get in contact with us, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love you, you know, to get involved and tell us what you want to see us do. We'll literally cook anything you want. It doesn't even have to be when it's related. Um, anyway, we're going to leave you to it. We'll see you guys in the next episode next Sunday. Um, have a lovely rest of your day. Take care. Thanks, guys. Holy moly! Holy moly! Holy moly!